Hello, all the great teachers out there. We have a lovely day here in China. As the spring has arrived, we have to start planning for next semester. So today we will talk about books. We all have one common goal for our students. My personal goal is to educate them in a way that is interesting, uh, meaningful, diverse, and not too challenging for them. I personally like to show them as many different examples and application of theory that I can find. That's why, at the beginning of my teaching career, I started book hunting in China. There was no problem at home, we had one book and it was fine. But here in China, we have very advanced kids in algebra, especially if we are uh, math teachers, this is important. So it's enough if we just do one or two examples and we can go on. If we want to stimulate all the students from the bottom one to the top achieving one, we have to have a good preparation for the class. And a good preparation requires finding the right examples using the best books. The right book is a very complex term. And of course it depends on what kind of level of students are we dealing with. I have high expectation for my kids and I'm giving them the full support to achieve my high standards. And I will mention the books that I'm using for pre-calculus and calculus. In this video we will talk about AP calculus books. If you are interested into pre-calculus books you can check another video. I use few books for calculus. AP calculus from Larson, Calculus for AP Rogowski, Calculus, Graphical, Numerical, Algebraic, 3000 solved problems in calculus, and Barron's AP Calculus. Firstly, I'll share what I did wrong the first year, and this is the reason we have to use diverse material. I did problems that specifically test techniques of differentiation. The worst scenario, what we can give them is to say use the quotient rule, use the product rule. They are never explicitly asked this in reality, but perhaps good at the beginning. Secondly, problems locating maxima, minima and points of reflection are really not needed. They should know simple examples here, so no need for time-consuming, long, complex equations. And thirdly, sketching the graphs. In my first year, I was fully excited how nice it is now that we can actually find the maxima of polynomials and get more accurate sketch. Eventually, we realized that these problems require a lot of time and energy, but don't actually contain any deep understanding or application. So now I think it's a waste of time. But still, if anyone is eager for these graphs, the book 3000 Solved Problems has many already solved examples. Each first year teacher is struggling with the appropriate choice of examples, especially if we have big differences between learners. Differentiation within the classroom is the topic for the next new video. Here I will just mention how I manage the lessons using so many different material. We always have to have one book that represents the base and support for our course. So I follow approximately the base and sequence of Larson's book. This is the book my kids have, and after we introduce the theory, we always do some basic examples from this book. It has solutions at the end for odd examples, so I tell kids to check them by themselves, and then we discuss at school if they differ from the key. Generally, I like Rogowski's calculus because of the variety examples it includes. It often goes beyond the AP level, which is suitable for the strong audience, which I have. At the end of new chapter, there is always a great practice test, I assign it as homework and it is really good overall check of understanding. For example, this is the integral review. These examples are exactly the ones that they expect on the real exam. Very typical example for calculation is example 3, f prime given and f of 1 equals 5, f of 3. And then good usage of second fundamental theorem of calculus here in example 4 and 5. This one requires that they switch the limits first and then use the theorem as we know. And as I said, this mixture of examples really remind them what to revise and check better. On one page, they have application example, substitution method, and examples with arctangent and logarithm antiderivatives. And the most familiar examples with accumulator function given. If our kids see the set of these problems at the end of the chapter, 
they will embrace the AP with confidence and no extra preparation is needed before the exam. So near the Larson's book I use most Rogowski's calculus and then graphical numerical algebraic. I definitely like this book a lot for volume of solid with known cross sections. Here we revise all the areas of plane regions that it might expect. Square, semicircle, radius given, diameter given, equilateral triangle, isocells triangle, and so on. And when we go through these formulas first, they feel really a lot less stressed as they meet these problems on exams. I do examples 8 to 10, just if I have some spare time, since I haven't noticed them to be in included in the real exam. And just looking at these simple 3D sketches help them so much to understand how to set the limits of integration. What I use the least is Barron's book. This is one of the winning books for AP preparations, but I'm not a big fan. It's probably good if someone is self-studying for the exam, since it really has many examples. And examples are often routine work and are just checking calculation skills, not enough connection of concepts and of course no free response questions, which are the most challenging ones, at least for my students. What I do like here is the slope field section, especially the matching slope field with their differential equation is not so innocent and students just have to see many cases. And this is the moment where complexity becomes simplicity and even the top students become impressed by the beauty of math. Here I will include now two answers of my students when is teaching enjoyable. Hi, I'm Alison. Study is enjoyable things. When I see why really complex things can be condensed in one simple matter. Hi, my name is Jason. Studying is becoming enjoyable when I have a chance to get access to the knowledge that I haven't met before. Here, Jason said he enjoys when he learns something new that he has known before. I know there are not many students like him. Therefore, I think it is our job as an educators to equip our kids with as much diversity in our course as much as we can. Consequently, we should use many different books. I hope I helped some of you how to approach or how to improve your calculus class if you have any opinions or suggestions, I'm happy to hear from you. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. I'm going back to my book, which is a bit different. Wish you a great day. Goodbye.